Peter Harper and colleague Terry Merston found yet more violations of procedure. Ideally, you should have separate teams for each incident, and none of those teams should come into contact with one another, so that if you have a potential murder scene at Rockingham, it must be kept completely separate from Bundy Drive, and equally so the vehicle that was involved. That should also be treated as a separate scene, and it clearly hasn't been done, so you've cross-contaminated all three scenes. There are also major concerns about the blood evidence in the Bronco being contaminated. Incredibly, a number of officers who had been at the Bundy crime scene were reported to have been inside the Bronco before it had been examined. And one of those officers had looked after Nicole's dog, whose blood-stained paws had originally led people to the victims. The fact that he got into the vehicle has been proved that he visited the scene. He's contaminated that vehicle. Therefore, all that evidence, it isn't evidence. It's corrupt evidence. It's, 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 there is no validity to that evidence. If you went to the Crown Prosecution Services with that type of evidence, it wouldn't see the light of day. It certainly wouldn't go to court, and it certainly wouldn't see a prosecution. Remarkably, just 36 hours after the murders, the Bundy Drive crime scene was washed down. But was this a case of bad police practice? Or was the evidence actively tampered with, or even planted, to help their case against Simpson? There were two pieces of crucial and damning evidence against him. Nicole's blood was found spattered on a pair of Simpson's socks in his bedroom, and blood was found on the back gate at Nicole's house three weeks after the scene had been washed down, which provided the best match by far to Simpson's DNA at the murder scene. But during the criminal trial, the defense requested that second tests be done on the blood from the socks and the gate. This time, they both revealed traces of a preservative called EDTA. EDTA is used by forensic scientists to stop blood clotting in the test tube. It cannot occur naturally in blood. The sock test showed that EDTA was found only in the blood stains and not in the rest of the socks. And the gate test had the same results. EDTA was found only in the blood stains and not in the control samples taken from the gate. For Terry Merston and Peter Harper, there is only one interpretation. There cannot be any other explanation with EDTA in the blood that it's been put there. Because it doesn't occur naturally just specifically in the spots of blood and not on the socks. Say for argument's sake that you could get EDTA in, in soap powder or something like that. Well, if, if that was possible, then that would explain the EDTA in the blood because it was in the socks. But when the socks haven't got EDTA or any sign of it, but the blood has, it speaks for itself. Someone must have put it there. The blood evidence in Simpson's Bronco was also crucial to the case against him. Two days after the murders, the car was tested. Simpson's blood was found, but there were also traces of both victims' blood. Particularly noticeable were the blood stains on the centre console, labelled as items 30 and 31. Item 30 was found to be only Simpson's blood. But like the sample from the gate, when the blood evidence in the Bronco was re-examined three months later, it had also changed. In particular, the results from the console were now very different. Item 30, re-labeled as 303 and 306, was now found to be a mixture of Simpson's, Ron Goldman's and Nicole's blood. 304 and 305 also differed from the original analysis. And 305 could only have been made with a hand wet with fresh blood. So how did the stains get there? If they were made by either of Simpson's hands, then the hands had to be covered in blood from both himself and the victims. But if that's the case, then everything else he touched, like the door handle, steering wheel, or light switch, should also be smeared with the same mixture. But these smears are all just Simpson's blood alone. If the stains were made with Simpson's right hand, and he was still wearing the glove, 
then the finger area of the glove should have his blood on the fingertips as well as blood from the victims. However, Simpson's blood is not found on the fingertips at all, nor is that mixture of all three of them found anywhere else in the vehicle. We both think that that blood, those finger marks, were put on that console at a later time. They were not on that console at the time of the murder. The area they're in, I would say, is impossible for those finger marks to be put onto that console without either the console being removed or the seat being removed. And the reason I say that is because the finger marks, if they were facing downwards, you might say, OK, that's a possibility, but they're not. The finger marks are facing upwards. You can't do it with the, with the right hand unless you've got an extremely flexible wrist and you can turn your hand at right angles. It's got to be your left hand, which means the elbow and forearm have got to be below the hand. They wouldn't be able to do it because they wouldn't get their elbow and forearm low enough for their hand to put the finger marks in that position. So with serious doubts over the blood from the Bronco, the gate and the socks, does this mean that the police were actively sweetening the case against Simpson? Numerous allegations have now surfaced about LAPD officers planting evidence. Detective Mark Furman, the racist officer who discovered some of the most important clues, was involved in cases where suspects were beaten and reports were falsified. Questioned under oath, he pleaded the Fifth Amendment, the only way in an American court to avoid giving an answer. Detective Furman, uh, have you ever falsified a police report? I wish to assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Detective Furman, did you plant or manufacture any evidence in this case? I assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. And there were other disturbing aspects to the police evidence. Simpson's defense team also alleged that some of the blood taken by the police after his interview had gone missing. And they discovered that all the main blood samples were taken away by one detective. We learned in the criminal trial that a lead detective had a vial of Mr. Simpson's blood. That alone, in any other case less controversial than this, would have been enough to have, have the case. Would, if that had been discovered as it was here, then the case would be over, literally. But we learned in the civil case, which went against Mr. Simpson, nevertheless we learned that that same senior detective had gone to the coroners and asked for and received samples of the victim's blood. And therefore, the blood of all the principals, that's 100% of the blood types found in this case, on the fence, on the ground, on gloves, on socks, on clothing, in the car, the universe of blood in this case, samples of which were in the hands of senior, at least one senior detective, thus violating the chain of evidence, absolutely, violating every safeguard, every tradition, every expectation on the part of the prisoner at the bar, not admitted freely, but dug out by a highly active and aggressive defense team. Mr. Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? So despite Simpson's blood at the scene and his lack of an alibi, there are now reasonable doubts about the evidence at all three crime scenes. Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the people of... When the, the verdict came, America stopped to watch, and the result split the nation. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant or Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder and violation of Some hailed the result as a victory over a system that would do anything to secure a conviction. His defense team believed that there was a wider pattern of police corruption. <laughs> 